Now this part we'll be looking at diesel cycle, the example for diesel cycle. So I have an example here for you. At the beginning of at the beginning of a compression, sorry, at the beginning of compression of an uh, uh, ideal diesel cycle, the gas has a temperature and pressure of 40 degrees C and 90 kPa at the beginning of the compression process. Now, the first thing is diesel cycle. Now, diesel cycle consists of two isentropic process, one constant pressure, and another is constant volume okay so that means you have four processes two isentropic one constant pressure and another is constant volume so at the beginning of the compression process so what i'm going to do here is to show you your the diagram first is the diagram so both the pv and the ts diagram for a diesel cycle so this is the isentropic lying on the PV diagram, that should be the adiabatic compression process. And then on the uh, TS, PV down, you can see both sides, you have both the isentropic line. On the PV diagram, you have both the isentropic and on the TS, so you have both the isentropic process. So this is the constant pressure on the PV and the constant pressure on the TS. Then you have the constant volume on the PV and the constant volume on the TS diagram. So from here, it gives you the diesel cycle. So put in all the four points, all the points on both the PV and TS, then you have this as your point one. So your PV should be referring to the lowest pressure. And we know that they are going in clockwise direction. So that will be point two, three, and four. Okay, constant pressure, both sides on your PA and uh, PV and TS. Okay, and then your constant volume on your PV and TS as well. Okay, so your constant entropy, isentropic, 1 to 2 and 3 to 4. Okay, so heat supply should be 2 to 3, because as you can see, 2 to 3 is that it actually referring to the increase in entropy. So that is why we uh, consider that 2 to 3 is the uh, heat supply. And the heat rejected is 4 to 1. Okay. So this uh, the clockwise direction, the arrows that's moving in the clockwise direction. So now here, actually they have given us the pressure of uh, 90 kPa. So you fill up the 90 kPa in your pressure column, first row. And then your temperature of 90, uh, sorry, your pressure is 90 kPa. And your temperature is uh, 40 degrees C. The initial temperature will be 40 degrees C. So when you plus it 273, you got 313 K. And then the maximum temperature, as you can see, the maximum temperature, then you have to refer to your TS diagram. Your maximum temperature is actually here. Okay, so that should be your T3. That should be your T3. Okay, so that is 1400 plus 273. Okay, so that you have 1673K Kelvin. So now, then the next step, you know, you have to find out the specific volume. Now, the question here, they didn't give us any volume or they, the question then don't even ask us to find out any mass at all. And then they consider us to consider the mass as 1 kg. As you can see, part 2, they ask us to find the work done per kg, per kilogram. So that means you can assume that the mass is 1 kilogram. So to find a specific volume, so we know that we got both pressure and temperature. So we can just use ideal gas law from here. PV equals to RT, not PV equals to MRT. Okay, so note that for point one, okay, mass is not given. So you have to take note that. Otherwise, okay, you have to use PV equals to MRT. Okay, if the mass is given, then you have to use PV equals to MRT. Otherwise, you use PV equals to RT. So the volume ratio of compression, the question I've given us is 16 to 1. 
so that it should be your V1 to V2. So from here you can find out your V2. Okay? So I put in all the points first. So use your isentropic. Then you can find out your volume, or oh sorry, your pressure P2. Now here I didn't work out, I didn't work out uh, by putting in all the numbers or the values into the equations. So now what you have to do is you have to calculate uh, based on the table that I have given um, on this slide here. Okay, so A, you should find A. Then you should find B, C, D, E, F, G, H, and I in that order, in that order. Okay, so you have to find every each of the properties, then place it into the table. Then you continue with the next one. Okay, the most important thing is, the first thing here is, you, we consider mass as 1 kg. Okay, or you can also ignore the, uh, the, the mass by straight away taking uh, PV equals to RT. So we go by steps, so that is to find the point C or the, the part C in the table. So that is to find your P2 actually. Then you have the next step point, that is your point D. You have to find your point D based on the table. So you can use okay, your ideal guess law again. But then uh, at the same time, you must refer to the table. Then only you can see which, which is the missing value that you need to find. Okay. So why P2 is equal to P3? Because that is the constant pressure process. Then from that, you can find out, okay, you use the ideal gas law again, you can find out a V3. Then since volume V1 and V4 is the same, so you can equate that to be the same at for your point G. Then H, use isentropic relationship. Okay. Then you can find P4. Then put it into the table again. Then you can find now the point I. So by referring to my step that I have given, that will guide you how to find A, B, C, D, E, F, G, and H, and I. Okay? So once you have found everything, just put it into the table. Just Okay, place all the values that you have into the table. Into the table. Okay, then your thermal efficiency. So, of course, you have to find out where is your heat supply, where is your heat rejector, and then you have to find out your network out. Okay, so your heat supply, I have already noted it in your, P, uh, in your TS diagram. Uh, so, heat supply should be from 2 to 3. Heat rejected should be from 4 to 1. 2 to 3 is a constant pressure process and 4 to 1 is a constant volume process. So you just have to refer back to the diagram and the table every now and then in order to solve all these values here that I have given. Okay? That's all. Thank you. Now, you, you have to follow